What's up guys, McKinsey here. So yesterday I asked you to submit questions for this uh, AMA video. Um, and because you guys are all awesome, I got way more questions than I expected. So I am not sure I'm gonna get through all of them. So I'm gonna pick my favorite ones and answer them for you guys. Well, I James asks, uh, how long have you been a designer and front end dev? Uh, what do you like most about it? And what do you dislike most? So I've been a designer for about 10 years now and a front end dev for about five. Um, it took me a while to force myself to learn how to code. But um, in addition, the back end stuff has really only been the past year or two um, that I've been uh, diving deeper into it. So what do I like most about it? Um, I love being able to take an idea I have and actually make it happen. So basically, um, the creative side of design mixed with the analytical side of development into um, a finished product. I think it's so cool. Uh, Dev Tips asks, if you never did web or design, what would you do with your life? Well. So I've always been super fascinated by uh, both marketing and business investing, that sort of thing. I was reading uh, business books when I was like 12, 13 years old. <laughs> so I imagine if I wasn't doing design or dev, um, I would be doing uh, more business stuff. But uh, design and dev has allowed me to do business stuff too. So um, on the flip side of that, I think I would probably do photography. It's something that's always fascinated me, but I've never dived deep into it. I feel like if I uh, went all out and uh, went for it, I think I would, I would love photography. Ampi asks, how do you start learning design when you suck at it? So the simple answer to this would just be to start designing stuff. Uh, look at the work of people you admire, try to recreate that. Obviously don't copy their work and mark it as your own, um, but just like, see what they're doing and try to think um, the thought process behind that. So Ira Glass has this fantastic talk where he discusses the gap. Basically it's where um, on one hand you have great taste which is why you got into the um, industry to begin with. On the other hand you have the quality of work you're producing um, and they don't match up. You know the quality of your work is not that great for the first few years. You want it to be great, uh, it has potential to be great, but it's just not that great. So the only way to close that gap between your taste and the work you produce is by producing a large volume of work. So it basically comes down to very focused and deliberate practice. So Adam asks, uh, I'm proficient in design, HTML, and SAS, but I cannot wrap my head around JavaScript or backend development such as Ruby on Rails. What sort of mind shift do I need to get in order to more easily understand this stuff? So I'm not sure it's a mind shift thing per se. Um, for example, when I did, I did my 12 and 12 basically to force myself how to learn Rails. And it, the crazy thing is, it wasn't until week, uh, I think five or six, that something just clicked and it all started to make sense on how the pieces fit together. So I would say it's probably a matter of you just building stuff, practicing quite a lot, um, and then accepting the fact that it's not you're not fully going to understand what you're doing, um, and then one day it's just going to click and you'll understand like how all the pieces fit together. Julius asks, um, I want to earn a little money, but apparently won't get engaged by a company for creating a website because I'm a student. Do you have an idea on how to get some small jobs? So I don't think it's a matter of you just being a student, which is why you're not getting work, because I did freelance work pretty much the entire time I was in college. I assume the issue is that uh, clients want to see your previous work, and maybe because you're just uh, starting out, you don't have a large volume or um, a lot of things to show. Just an idea for you. You do not have to get your first client before you start doing client work. Uh, when I first started out, didn't have anything to show. So what I did was I actually made up companies. I think I did a landscaping company and I made their logo, bought a URL for them, 
um, made their website and I put it out and I put it in my portfolio as if they had contacted me and hired me to uh, create that. Uh, Nicola asks, could you do a tour of your home office? Uh, what do you think about Rails 5 and how is Unicast going? Yes, I can do a tour of my office, but not in this video. I'm gonna do it in a future one. Um, Rails 5 looks sweet, Action Cable looks awesome, and I'm excited to play around with it. Unicast is doing great. I will have a new course out in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for that. So I'm probably gonna butcher this name, but um, Matej Conrad? If I say your name wrong, I'm really sorry. Uh, he asks, do you work for a company or do you freelance? Um, I currently work full time and um, I do unicast on the side and then YouTube on the side of the side and then all my other projects on the side of the side of the side. Jeff asks, how do you like your Apple Watch? Would you say it's worth the price? I love this thing. It's awesome. Um, it's definitely a first generation product. There's uh, quite a lot that could be improved, but I am Apple all the way, so um, I personally think it's worth the price. I love it, but others may disagree. Bears asks, if you are new to design and development, would you advise to focus entirely on one element at a time? JS, jQuery, Illustrator, um, and Photoshop, Ruby, etc. Or is it okay to delve into all the things all together? My problem is I get fascinated by all aspects of the creation process, design and development, and I sometimes feel guilty that I don't focus on one element at a time. So it really just depends on your goals. If your goal is to uh, build a web application, I would just say dive in. Uh, you can figure out the HTML, the Ruby, Ruby on Rails, um, all that stuff. You just like need little pieces here and there and they fit together. After you get to a certain point, you are going to have to dive deep into one thing at a time uh, to get a full understanding of how it works. For example, my 12 and 12, I got the basics of Rails down through that. Um, and now in my learning, I'm diving deeper into Ruby to get a full grasp of how all the stuff works. Dragon King Gav um, asks, what was your biggest challenge when you, or biggest challenge you faced when learning Ruby on Rails? And how did you overcome it? Honestly, one of the biggest problems I faced is when I started learning Rails, I didn't really know anyone else. Um, it wasn't until way after the 12 and 12 videos and everything blew up that I started to meet people in the industry. But learning that, um, I didn't have anyone to ask questions to or any of that sort of thing. So um, my biggest issue was figuring stuff out on my own um, and persevering through those difficult times, basically just banging my head against the wall um, on a problem until I solved it. And I usually solved it through some random blog or random uh, Stack Overflow thread. Ahmed asks, is PHP worth learning? No. It really just depends on what you want to be doing. Um, I do a lot of WordPress stuff, so I'm forced to uh, use PHP. But PHP compared to Ruby, PHP is awful. Ruby's great. So uh, play around with it, see what you like best. So. Nick Hill asks, have you ever tried GitHub Atom? And if you have, what do you think and why didn't you decide to use it? Uh, to answer your question, no, I have not tried Atom. I've heard great things about it, but I'll be honest, I feel like the design and dev communities have a bit of uh, shiny object syndrome. So any new tool or feature or anything they freak out over, um, everybody wastes a bunch of time trying to learn this new tool instead of just getting to work and using what they're already good at. I stick with Sublime, I love it, it's great. Um, maybe eventually I'll move on to something else, but for the time being, Sublime's where it's at. Basil828 asks, apart from all the technical questions I have, how do you do your amazing hair? Oh, This takes a little bit of product and a lot of blow drying. Andreas asks, uh, any tips for young developers? Yes, I would say, just uh, stay curious, experiment, 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 experiment uh, as much as you can. Just build stuff of your own. Uh, you can follow tutorials, but a tutorial will only take you so far. You have to build stuff of your own um, in order to grasp how it all works. Anthony asks, uh, why should I ask you anything? Gabriel asks, 
Uh, who is your favorite Ruby on Rails host other than Heroku for projects and deploying apps? Uh, first off, Heroku is fantastic. Recommend them. Uh, second, I would choose DigitalOcean. They just did a redesign, it's beautiful, so check it out. Abhishek, if I pronounced your name wrong, I'm sorry, um, asks, hey McKinsey, um, how do you learn Ruby on Rails? I tried a couple of times and created some web apps, but after some time, I just stopped. Lack of perseverance. Um, and how much time should I devote to Ruby on Rails? And most important, how to stick to the process. Uh, which part do you like most? Front end part, like HTML, or the Ruby on Rails? What I did for myself to finally learn Rails was I um, committed to it and um, announced it publicly that I was going to do it. Uh, that's where my 12 and 12 challenge came from. And on top of it, I made videos each week, obviously. And as those started getting more views and people were expecting the next week, uh, that just put more pressure on myself. And I kind of just backed myself in the corner um, and forced myself to do it. So how do you stick with it? Just force yourself to do it. Don't give yourself an option out. Uh, which part do you like most? Well, I love design the most, 100%. Um, but between front end and back end, they're probably equal, I would say. So Robo asks, uh, how long do you need uh, to learn Ruby on Rails and where? How do you make money with Rails? So to get to a point where you can build your own stuff with Rails, I would say maybe a handful of months. Uh, you could get basic knowledge and get a few web, app, web apps out the door. Um, for example, 12 of them in 12 weeks. But to get really, really great at it, I would say probably a minimum of, of several years of actively working and practicing and um, deliberately practicing uh, Rails. How do you make money at it? Um, consulting or a full-time gig? The one last question I want to cover, a lot of people asked it in one form or another, is basically, where do you start learning Rails? And I think what they want to know is, where did I personally start uh, learning Rails? So the resources I went through, uh, Code Academy, Code School, Treehouse, One Month, uh, Go Rails, uh, Michael Hartle's Rails Tutorial, uh, Thinkful, Stack Overflow, uh, Google, just random blogs, and uh, YouTube, just to name a few. But here's the thing, this is something that took me forever to realize. Uh, you can go through tutorials all you want. You can go through hundreds of them, but you will not understand them until you put that knowledge to work, until you actually start building your own stuff. Um, that is why for me, I did my 12 and 12 challenge, built 12 web apps. It forced me to actually put that knowledge into use. Um, and the fantastic thing is it clicked and it all started making sense after uh, a few. But up until then, I tried for on and off for years to learn Rails, and it didn't work out. Precious. Do you want to be on video? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in there. All right, guys, that is all. Uh, if I didn't get to your question, maybe I will in a future video. I do want to do another one of these because it's fun. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate all the questions. So until next time, guys, have a beautiful day. I'll see you guys soon.